Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Lean Business Ireland, the fifth webinar of this online series that has commenced since the outbreak of COVID-19 here in Ireland. Um, just some housekeeping before we kick off. You'll note that you're currently muted. I'd ask that you remain on mute. Um, and should you have any questions for the panelists, please use the chat function to do that. I will be monitoring the chat and I will relay any questions to the moderator. Um, tonight, it will be a little bit different than our previous um, sessions. We have been focusing on industry in the last couple of sessions, but tonight we're going to focus on the state supports that are available to industry. And these state supports are the supports that are administered and managed by the Local Enterprise Office, Enterprise Ireland and IDA Ireland. There are other supports out there, and I would encourage you to engage with the relevant bodies for those supports. Again, please stay muted and enjoy the show. Thank you very much. I'm going to hand over now to the moderator, Darren Grennan. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Senan. Good evening, everybody. Welcome, uh, well, welcome along, and thanks for taking a little bit of, bit of time out of your evening uh, to join us. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, tonight uh, for us to present all of the state supports, or certainly most of the state supports that are available to businesses in these uh, trying times. So while COVID-19, we're not going to mention it too much, but we can't avoid it at this stage. It has a massive uh, impact on our businesses and on life in general over the last number of weeks and will do for the foreseeable future, I guess. Um, we we have to move forward. Um, there's there's no standing still in business. We need to, need to progress. So the state bodies who we're going to hear from tonight have uh, stepped up to the mark and provided significant supports to businesses uh, to allow them to, to, to take those steps forward. So I guess tonight is about looking forward, looking at the supports that are available to us. We've got three uh, excellent uh, representatives to speak with us tonight, um, and they're going to sort of try and outline quickly uh, for us the types of supports that are available to your business. So if you have questions, as Senna has already suggested, uh, put them into the chat box so that uh, we can we can uh, try and deal with them as we go along. Um, so. Tonight, uh, we're going to start off with the local enterprise office. Um, so the Le local enterprise office is represented, or the local enterprise um, is represented tonight um, by the Kildare local enterprise, uh, Jackie McNabb. So Jackie, are you online with us there? Um, Can't you see your face? Can you hear me, Darren? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, I can hear you. brilliant. Very good. Um, so Jackie is um, in the Kildare uh, local enterprise office. So, Jackie, I suppose just to start off, I guess life has changed in the local enterprise office over the last number of weeks. Just as I suppose what we were going to do tonight was, if you were to describe a day in January versus a day in April, how different have they okay. been? What has been um, happening in your day? I suppose considerably different. I'm working with local enterprise offices now. We're 26 years in existence uh, for those who you are around long enough to work with county and city enterprise boards that's how we would have started and then five years ago have developed into the local enterprise office with an with a pre presence in county councils across the country uh, our remit historically was quite tight um, and depending on leo to leo the flexibility of that remit changed so primarily our job was to support startups and expanding companies in manufacturing and international traded services with financial aid, mentoring and business advice. And in latter years with the trading online voucher, which was channeled through us through the Department of Communications. And then um, uh, we, we then started to also work with microfinance. So year on year, we, our remit got broader. But nothing like the breadth of what we had to deal with, I suppose, since March the 2nd in particular. Um, and now very much, we were established five years ago as the one-stop shop. And that was the branding that Mr. Hogan at the time wanted upon us. I would have to say that that may have only been a brand up until the 2nd of March. And now truly, we have become the local one-stop shop for every question that a business has to have on the ground as to where they stand with stabilizing their company and how they're going to restart. So my staff, uh, uh, unlike much of the public service, which may have been muted um, by their efforts or their ability to work in specific um, areas, 
the staff of the local enterprise offices have been working for the last six weeks, uh, not five days, but seven days in order to deliver the service to the community um, that it serves in each county. So it's been very, very busy. And I suppose we're dealing with uh, not files and we're not dealing with client numbers. We're dealing with big people. We're dealing with people that we watch uh, develop businesses and grow businesses. You know, we, we companies that we would have worked with when they had one employee, saw their grow to 15 and then shut their doors overnight. So an awful lot of what we have to and, and what we do um, deliver is a lot of empathy and a lot of listening um, to the needs of the clients that are looking for advice from us. Yeah. So counselling is an awful lot of what we do at the moment. <laughs> Important. So it's good. It's also an opportunity for you guys to engage with uh, some more businesses on the ground that maybe for whatever reason, you know, you had lost touch with or that they had moved on or you had moved on beyond them, but they're now coming back to maybe look at some of the potential supports. Um, so just on that, Jackie, I know you have a, a short presentation uh, put together. You want to maybe run through your slides there just and give us a, uh, give us a quick whistle stop yeah, tour. Absolutely. Yes. We have. <laughs> You, you have a local enterprise office in each of your counties and in Dublin you have four. Um, the contact details are there for, for the Kildare local enterprise and in essence across the country you will see www.localenterprise.ie forward slash your relevant county and that will get you online to their, the resources. In the main our resources are, are very much the same um, run across the county. Um, and again, as I say, historically, we would have been servicing under 10 and indeed manufacturing or international traded services. But you can take it uh, since, they, since we're all in a very much um, survival mode during the COVID crisis and indeed its challenges, all businesses should be contacting their local enterprise office regardless of their size or sector to get advice and guidance. And if nothing else, we will direct them. And indeed, if they have export opportunity, we would be directing them to our colleagues in Enterprise Ireland, who we work very closely with. And Breed will talk to you later on. I think there's another slide coming. So you will see, and again, like many businesses, the local enterprise offices have had to remodel themselves. Uh, none of the enterprise offices would have been working, or very little, but. I would, I would say, no, none of us were doing virtual online training. And suddenly we have put all our services and training online and have done it very quickly. So just a taste of what you will see online under upcoming events on everybody's website. So for ourselves, we've got monthly virtual network lunch um, where we, we're very conscious that we don't want to find that businesses are isolated as well as worried. Um, that they can come together and network over virtual tea or coffee. The Trading Online Voucher, probably one of the biggest uh, products we have to offer at the moment. And a lot, uh, I'll go through the changes on that in a few moments. Instagram Essentials, don't lose touch with customers, customer export and import training. So these are in the main, the kind of uh, programs that clients are looking for across the country. And they will change from county to county, but in general, they're all the same. Mentoring, as you'll see on the next slide, is um, an ongoing service that all local enterprise offices offer. We have a, a panel of mentors, um, all relevant uh, to business needs currently, and all experts in their field, whether it's business strategy, financial planning, market research, marketing promotion, production and planning and distribution website and planning and design it's free of charge and it's available currently on Skype or Zoom um, and that is ongoing throughout the COVID crisis you just have to put a request into your local enterprise office and you will get uh, mentor sessions total uh, confidential one-on-one uh, -on -one advice and just also Darren to your point um, it wasn't so much that people didn't reach out but perhaps did people may in business may not have found us relevant to theirs because of the brand that we carried, manufacturing and international services. Now we're seeing any myriad of businesses looking for our attention. Yeah. So on the next slide, um, 
Senator, you might put it up there. The Leo Continuity Voucher, up to two and a half thousand fully funded. It closes tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. So I'll repeat that again. It closes tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. <laughs> Brita is laughing. My colleagues want that spelled out loud and clear because we have, um, it has uh, been hugely successful across the country. It has delivered continuity plans into um, several thousand businesses currently. And that plan can be to design a plan just to look at a business roadmap for your business, an ICT strategy for your business, a HR strategy for your business. Not only, as you say in your own uh, tagline for tonight, stabilizing, reinventing, and then restarting uh, the business. We've also funded people to get advice on, on remote working. The Micro Ireland Finance package at the moment, again, has significantly enhanced in that there is now loans from 5,000 to 50,000 for businesses that can prove that they were viable prior to COVID. So that's important to, to remember. If you have a decent balance sheet before COVID, and given that we could get back to better days, microfinance are anxious to fund you. Um, six months interest free, six months uh, payment free. We will help you in the local enterprise office prepare that microfinance um, application with supportive mentors and ensure that uh, you get the best opportunity to uh, get that. Um, that is now a loan rather than grant and it's at four and a half percent currently, but the first six months interest and repayment free. Um, and again, eligible for businesses, 10 employees and under. Um, and those that are not in a position to get funding elsewhere. So that is the microfinance. I think the next slide might be about tops. Trading online voucher scheme, a grant up to two and a half thousand. We've always had it and forgive it at 50%. That now has gone to 90% and it's moved to 90% up to September. So it's a COVID change. So granted up to 90% of the fund or two and a half thousand of what it would cost to take your business online. And that has been so well uh, taken up across the country. So digital initiatives, social media, um, branding and so forth would all be covered to take a business online. And again, under, under 10 employees, I know that Breda and their colleagues in Enterprise Ireland have a particular product for retail that, it, that can reach further, further than that. And then I think, uh, Again, look, the local enterprise office is open to business um, to the national, the traditional trading that we normally did. And I suppose talking about traditional trading that we always did, not to forget that we still are open to applications for people that want to work with us on lean systems and lean processes. Um, we've had an excellent relationship with uh, Stuart and Jigsaw. Um, and we have had considerable success with companies putting in and implementing lean change to their businesses and seeing productivity increase and indeed costs come down. So we're still open to those. So for all of our services, whether it's grant aid, business advice, business training, lean training, just log on to your local enterprise office um, or pop off an email to them and, and they will only be too happy to answer. I would just ask for a little bit of patience. Normally our offices will turn queries around in 24 hours, but uh, given the um, popularity of the continuity voucher, you might you know, give them a, a day or two to get back to you, but they will get back to you. No problem. Okay. okay. So those are some useful links, local enterprise office uh, for this dash response. And again, Links to our services and indeed the other agencies are on gov.ie. Uh, very good. Thank you very much uh, for that, uh, Jackie. That was, I say, a whistle stop uh, tour or run through the, the various supports from, from the state, uh, the local enterprise offices. Um, and again, you know, the, the, just on the business continuity voucher, I guess, I'm not sure, did that closing date sort of creep up on us a little bit? Has the funding run out there or what's the reason no. for the closure of that scheme? No, which was always the 15th of May. There was a four okay. million budget put in. 
that that was added to and put in 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 um it was whichever was gone okay. first okay so we we certainly we always knew it was the the 15th of, of May. Um, I suppose my repetition is that often with SMEs, they hear about it, they like it, and then they forget about getting the application yeah. in. So I don't want yeah. anyone disappointed across the country um, to access that particular fund. Yeah, I know, I know we, our business, we, we have used it with some of our clients and it has proved to be very popular and very powerful. You can get even cross-disciplinary support. So it doesn't have to be one particular discipline, but there's opportunities for finance, marketing you know lean uh, different different things so it has been very very powerful and i guess i suppose just with with businesses starting to reopen i suppose there's maybe a challenge coming down the line that we've had some inquiries in relation to you know reconfiguring for reopening and you know the cost associated with compliance and some of that sort of stuff so there's a gap there somewhere but we'll, we'll see who steps into the gap but you know certainly um it's been a fantastic uh, fun so far so Let's 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 see. Maybe there's there'll be, it might come back in a slightly different guise. Any yeah. thoughts on that, Jackie? Dan, I suppose what I what I'd suggest to you is um, the continuity voucher as it as it stands um, is being used, I suppose, for an awful lot of people to stabilise their finances in many cases and to look at getting extra liquidity into their business. And that's pro possibly where we were at the beginning. People have moved slightly, uh, they've, they've moved because they're now cashless. So it's about mm -hmm. capital. How do they get capital into their business? How do I resolve HR issues? And how do I resolve health and safety issues? Yeah. And I, I would just uh, stress that mentoring is still available and will still be available. I know ourselves in Kildare, we have bi-weekly uh, webinars on health and safety and HR, two separate ones, and they are followed then by one-on-one -on -one sessions with clients where they need health and safety and HR, because that's where we're moving into. And then we will always, always assist with microfinance funding or bank applications or indeed grant aid from ourselves. So I don't want people to feel that the continuity voucher perhaps was the panacea of everything and nothing else will happen after it. We will go back and use many of the traditional products that we already had and were using very effectively pre-COVID. Yeah. And actually, I know that we're still using it to complement the business continuity voucher because in some cases, continuity voucher is used for one element and then we will put a business mentor in for another element. So, yeah. but, you know, don't want anybody to get too concerned or too hung up on it uh, that that there's a time limit on it. The service will continue. It just put extra bu budget into to the system uh, for Leos to uh, support more clients at, at a time. No problem. No problem. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. Well, look at Jackie. Thanks very much. As I say, that was a you know a quick a quick overview we, we might come back with some questions at the very very end um but for the moment we will thank you and we'll move on we'll let you out of the heart and we're going to hand over now to rory o'halon uh rory from enterprise ireland uh rory is the head of the competitors department uh good evening rory how are you hello everyone steve um well darren <laughs> so Rory, how are, how are things in Enterprise Ireland? Again, a very quick one just before you go into your formal presentation. How have things changed since, let's say, the end of January and the early part of March for you and your team? Uh, quite a lot. Uh, so my team, so my, I'm the manager of the uh, Operational Excellence, or Lean, I suppose, the Lean team, the Operational Excellence uh, Department. We have a team of great people who work uh, directly with clients on developing their Lean Operational Excellence roadmaps and helping them uh, get uh, guiding them through funding applications. So what's changed for us? Um, chaos initially. <laughs> initially the, the laptop conundrum, 250 people without laptops, the most important people, finance, grants. Um, so we've gotten over all that uh, and steadied the ship. Uh, but in the meantime, obviously um, huge pressure to, uh, to help clients more and that's, that's what we're about. Um, so it's helping our clients are the above 10 people, um, Irish-owned manufacturing and internationally traded services companies. Uh, so it's not every company above uh, 10 people, um, but it's, it's manufacturing or uh, 
internationally traded or at least potentially internationally traded exporters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what else have we done? Uh, we've put in place a, a business continuity voucher. So that's been uh, that's been my headache or joy. <laughs> My baby has been that for for a while, uh, so we put a team around that, uh, and I can talk about that and some of our other offers. Um, yeah. Okay. So we we will maybe uh, flick over onto the. I know you've slides pre um, prepared there. I just want to maybe run through the course. I think. Sure. So there you go. So uh, can you give so Stan a shout. He'll move the slides on for you, Rory. And well, the first one is repeating what I've said. So we're we're interested, I suppose, in startups and growth companies, um, and investing in the development of the people, the leadership teams, um and then helping the the idea is the focus on exports is really about every euro exported is one more euro in the country circulating and um, creating employment um, and funding and tax benefits for for everyone that's that's the idea uh, so yeah let's move on the next slide shows i suppose what the the focus that we have had in particular in light of brexit uh, our big message was to be competitive to innovate and to diversify. And these were the, the kind of key supports that made sense. And they still make sense. And I, I would back up what Jackie is saying. That's very much part of the message is there's a lot of this that uh, still makes sense to be looking at how you can operate more excellently, uh, do your lean projects, invest in new equipment when, when the time is right to put it in there, uh, re-engineer your business processes, explore new product opportunities, and figure out how you can uh, do more abroad uh, when, we, when we can travel someday. Um, so yeah, let's go on to the next slide then, which doesn't say very much. So yes, the one after that. So this is, so looking at what was our response as the, um, the pandemic hit, uh, a number of things became clear. One was that companies wouldn't necessarily have the money to keep going and hence starting from the left, uh, or wouldn't necessarily even be able to find out how to get the money or be in a position to, to draw down on, on other funding. Uh, so the Business Financial Planning Grant is a 5K uh, consultancy grant to help companies put a, a financial plan together. And that financial plan is particularly around getting more funding from the Strategic Banking Corporation, from Enterprise Ireland, from their own banks. Um, it's, it's getting their finances in order. And that leads us to our sustaining enterprise fund, which isn't necessarily a fund for everyone. It's, it's not like a, a voucher uh, for everyone, but it is looking at companies that were sound before the crisis hit um, and can show that and yet have been badly impacted, but clearly have a recovery opportunity that will be sound again. Um, so legally, we're not allowed to help companies who are um, who we can't save, I suppose, to put it uh, in, in a stark terms. Um, but, but we really need to get behind uh, everyone who can, who can put a good financial plan and, and sustain um, sustaining plan around. And that fund is, is interesting in that uh, it's not a loan. It looks and, and smells like a loan to some degree, but it's a bit different in that it's a, a, non, it's a repayable advance. So there's no repayment for the first three years. So it's really saying, here's some cash, to help you out for up to three years before you even start thinking about paying it back. Um, after that, there's a repayment, all right. Um, but it doesn't, unlike a loan, it doesn't even go on your, on your liabilities. So if the company didn't survive, um, that doesn't, this doesn't impact on, on it. Just moving on to the next column, and I won't spend quite so long on, on each, but the Lean Business Continuity Voucher. So I suppose we copied the, uh, the Leo Business Continuity Voucher. We put Lean on it, I guess partly, and this audience will appreciate, that lean, we think, is, is part of the answer to business continuity. Uh, how can you do things better? How can you eliminate waste? And relook really at what is it you're doing uh, and how can you add best value to your, um, to your customers? It's not exclusively lean. Um, so it does look at um, health and safety and how do we get back up and running, um, all that kind of stuff as well. Um, now we don't stray into the, the financial stuff because uh, we have that covered in the business financial planning grant. Yeah. Our voucher scheme is not closing on Friday. Uh, we don't have an end. Uh, well, we do have an end date at the end of the year. Whether we keep it open that long, we'll see. Um, but uh, it's, it's a key part of our, um, 
are starting to uh, address the issues. However, very quickly, it's moving into a lean start, which we recently updated to an 80% grant. So that's a 5K grant, a lean plus, which can be up to 50K. And these are about getting re really re-engineering your processes. Um, the act on are, are more consultancy grants. There's, there's more help out there. There's a huge, uh, from the, the service providers on the lean forum, um, as, long, as well as many others, there's a huge amount of help that we can offer and, and help companies with. Um, including mentoring panels, again, as, as Jackie mentioned. And then diversification. So the online retail scheme was mentioned. That is open for applications at the moment. That is a specific offer for non-EI clients. So the, the, the larger uh, retail operation who has some retail presence but really needs to invest in it and could do with help and funding to, to invest in, in really getting online. Um, and e-marketing uh, is, a, is a larger version of the, um, the getting online, um, the, the trading online voucher. So they were the main supports that I wanted to highlight. Yeah. Um, I suppose the next slide is, is really just putting across this message that we're in a stabilized situation now. Um, that reset is more than a word to me. To, that reset to me is, for businesses, and I suppose my advice and, and suggestion to businesses is about, you really need to look at what is the purpose, as, as you would with any good lean engagement, start with what is the purpose of the business? Does, uh, where have the, and in the change, the current change, but also changes to come. We, have, we already had two global threats um, or, or opportunities in terms of climate change and sustainability, and also digitization. So companies need to be looking at those three things, the, the COVID pandemic and how that changes the world, climate change and how that will likely change the world, and digitization and how that's changing business models. And really look at how they can uh, redo their business plans and find where the customers are and, and, and chase them. And of course, we are all looking forward to a, a recovery and growth phase, which will come, says I confidently. <laughs> Very good. I suppose, as you mentioned, the opportunity for digitization, it, that, that has sort of been accelerated, I think, with, with all the things that are happening in terms of how we're communicating with each other, how teams, how we're managing teams, how we're managing processes. You know, there's, a, there's a, been a massive um, acceleration of digitization. So it's just one of the one of the next steps, I guess. And it just happens to be maybe accelerated a little bit. Would that be fair to say? Absolutely. And in terms of Enterprise Ireland, even for years, we have been complaining to our grants guys why can't we do grants <laughs> online? Why do we have to fill in bits of paper and post them in? You don't post anything into Enterprise Ireland anymore. Um, so we've moved to our letters of offer are issued with DocuSign. Um, our grant claims are now going uh, online. Um, and while those systems aren't perfect yet, that's what we're working hard to, to really achieve. A really accelerated digitization. So brilliant, bring it on. Yeah. Very, yeah. very good. Delight, delighted to hear that as, as, as one of the service providers for the grant claims. It's great to hear <laughs> the being of our lives. Um, okay, just one final point then before we move on to the next speaker. Um, just in terms of where does, if, if there's client companies uh, on, the, on the call here or on the discussion, what's the first point, point of contact? Where, where do they need to go in order to try and find out how to navigate themselves around those opportunities uh, for funding? Where, where do they go first, really? Just on a quick point. Yeah, well, the usual message is still there. Talk to your development advisor. Mm -hmm. Um, however, we also have set up a business response team. So there's a business response at enterprise-ireland.com um, and there's a full-time team there helping people navigate um, rapidly or as quickly as we can to, to the right supports for them. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good. Okay, Rory, we'll, we'll move on. Thank you very much for your time. We'll come back to you a little bit later. We'll a little bit chat about uh, some of the lean stuff, um, but thanks very much for that, uh, again, quick overview. I'm uh, going to pass on next to uh, IDA Ireland, represented. Uh, tonight by Breda O'Toole. So Breda, good evening, how are you? I'm very well, thanks Darren, how are you? Excellent, good. You're, you're coming in loud and clear there, that's great. So again, similar similar sort of just quick introduction from your point of view, so how's life changed for the last couple of weeks? Strange question to be asking, but um, from, from the business point of view, how has life changed in the, in the yeah. IDA offices? Well, I, I guess what we would say globally is um, a business as usual. So uh, in, in, in a, a new normal. So uh, we, we are continuously selling the country as open for business. We have redesigned our ability to do itineraries to the con country. 
to remote um, access use by our clients to try and win new business, create new jobs. And then with existing clients, very similar. You know, for, for, for our business, it's just like Enterprise Ireland and, and the Leos. It's all about engaging with the, with the client and trying to build a relationship with them um, and so we just keep at that I suppose one of the things that's really changed though is not being able to physically uh, engage with clients and meet with them and talk to them um, and there's uh, I, I was looking at my diary there last week and I, I, I should be down south last weekend last Saturday night celebrating one of the wonderful companies we have here in Ireland we've been here for about 60 years imagine celebrating 60 years uh, with a, a German company down in, in, in the south they're employing about 50 people and that's the kind of sad piece of this because you can't do that anymore yeah. um, and so that's a, I, I feel a bit that we're missing out on but I'm sure next year we'll, we'll, uh, we'll pretend it's, it's 60 years next year instead of 61 <laughs> but uh, that, that, I, that I guess but it, you know it's, it's all about being online and, and as uh, Rory says there you know we're trying to help our companies be more digital, digitally focused and uh, undertake digital transformation uh, processes within their organizations so i guess you know the state bodies need to be doing the same so um yeah certainly being fun okay, very very good well so there'll be plenty of time to party next year then oh I? yes yes bring it on <laughs> <laughs> okay so i believe you have a couple of slides prepared i have yeah if you want to just uh, go into that structure there i think uh Sam will let you first. thank you so off you go then brita Okay, so so as, as people probably know online there, that this uh, presentation is really aimed at the multinational community that's joined us. Uh, and IDA is the state agency that's responsible for attracting direct foreign foreign direct investment into Ireland, and then helping companies establish here, expand here, and grow their operations. And our job, our our job, I, I can, I'd say I can say this for Enterprise Ireland and Leo as well, is completely focused on helping companies create jobs. So that's, that's what we're about. So if we move on to the next slide there, just to tell you what we've been up to. Uh, so IDA sort of decided when COVID-19 hit that we would be involved in three things. So engaging with our 1,500 client companies in the foreign direct agency world and, and talking with them, reaching out to them both at corporate level in America and, and um, Asia Pacific and Europe and seeing where they're up to and making sure they understand we're supporting the Irish sites here in Ireland, working with colleagues across the government system. So all the um, protocols and the NSAI standards, all, all agencies have been contributing to those with feedback from our own clients. And then the third thing really IDA is involved in is, is supporting the Irish um, health and service executive to uh, really source globally because obviously like EI our offices are all over the world trying to source um, personal protective equipment and and so on from from companies across across the world so they've been the kind of things IDA itself has been engaged with and there on the right hand side you'll see some actions that no doubt reflect what our companies have been at so if we move on there to the the next slide please Senan. so a couple of things just just kind of the businesses themselves and the performance of our FDI companies um, a few things we've seen is and I don't think it's any different for, for the SME sector, the Irish indigenous companies. It is absolutely amazing to me. I don't know why, but it continues to be amazing. Brilliant flexibility of companies here. Um, I'm certainly seeing within our own uh, portfolio how they, some of them are successfully implementing business continuity plans and keeping up and running and going like, like a, lot, a lot of the SMEs. Um, extensive homeworking and, and indeed what I think for any of you that, that would be interested in how to get yourself back and working practically again, as well as all the really strong guidance that's out there. Some of the webinars that are previous to this one tonight, um, indeed, that there, there's some great talks on how companies have actually managed social distancing and hygiene measures. So go back and listen to those because they're, they're, they're really worth uh, hearing about. So maybe if I move just through some of the supports now, so on to the next slide there. Thanks, Ellen. Uh, so again, Enterprise Ireland and the Leos and ourselves have worked very closely together over, over the years. And some of the grants that you see there, Rory has already mentioned, IDA clients also have access to. I've put some of them up there, the, the financial planning one, the sustaining enterprise fund and the COVID-19 act on supports. And in addition from some of the larger multinational companies that might be sitting in here and indeed larger indigenous companies, not to forget, Get the pandemic uh, stabilization and recovery fund and that's a two billion fund that's managed by the strategic investment fund and it's really again for companies that have a very strong potential 
in terms of her business in Ireland, but COVID-19 has knocked them back. So I mean, to go into all the detail of those, you, you know them and probably have been using them. But again, um, IDA and EI particularly work very closely together with the medium to larger companies. So those are, are also accessible to IDA clients. Um, just the next slide then will show, move on there a bit, please. Thank you. So again, for some of the um, medium to larger organizations, a very interesting a new product, I guess, or fund that's available to you is the Rapid Research and Innovation Funding. And this is really where companies, um, EI and IDA supported companies, might have some very innovative solution to our existing issue around COVID-19. And whilst the call closed on uh, the 1st of May, further opportunities will be available here. And I'd strongly recommend that um, EI and IDA and SFI Science Foundation Ireland companies keep their eye on this because um, any that is investing in um, looking at innovative new products to support COVID-19 or to address it, I should say, uh, this is, is a good fund to, to consider. So moving on again um, to the next slide, this is the business, the lean business continuity voucher uh, that you already talked about and the business continuity voucher that um, Jackie talked about. Very similarly, IDA also has a business continuity support for its clients. And again, it's two and a half thousand euros for two and a half days consultancy, goes up to 90 days worth, or 30, excuse me, 30 days worth of consultancy support for larger organizations that might need additional support in this area. And some of the things I've just pointed out, very similar to Rory, we're seeing the same thing. Companies that want to navigate the return to work, that want to get the best use of technology, really support home working for their people post COVID-19 and develop maybe new business plans because um, of, of the challenges they've faced. In fact, work a new normal, if you like. This is a fabulous resource with great providers behind it, lots of experience. And I am absolutely saying to uh, multinational community, come and take advantage of this support. I, I think it's great, 100% grant aided. Uh, so really take advantage of this one. So if we move on again, please. Thanks, Senan. Doing a great job there behind the scenes. And um, so very similar to Rory and Jackie, don't forget about all the supports that are still there and have been there pre-COVID-19. We have a huge number of supports around operational excellence, uh, global business services program. You can get 50 to 80% um, grant aid to retrain your people are at and introduce new technologies around delivery of business services. We have the Go Green and Lean programs, as Rory has already described, business continuity support I've already mentioned, and there's a, um, a really nice package for capital expenditure in technology. How many times, by the way, I've said that word, I'm going to be um, giving you a prize for anybody that can remember by the end of this, but technology being key and digitization and transformation, um, particularly now, uh, post COVID-19, a capital grant of up to 150,000, depending on your investment, to reinvest in your asset or your technology on your sites. So if we move on again, um, another set of uh, grant supports is all around expanding into new markets and innovating your business. And any company out there who has put all their eggs in one market, now is a fantastic chance to take advantage of these programs and to really look at entering new markets. And you can get an innovation voucher, 100% funded, EI uh, provide the same, feasibility and R&D grants, export service program, international marketing programs are all there. All you have to do is reach out and say, this is what I need to do, and we'll be there to try and uh, supply that support. The international marketing program is really interesting. I've seen some companies get a phenomenal marketing um, plan with the help of a consultant to, uh, ex to explore brand new markets for their products and services. So th this is a really important one, I think, uh, post COVID-19. So moving on then to the kind of the final area of, of grant support, and that's all around, you know, let's face it, one of our most important aspects of our business, uh, the people capability. And IDA Ireland is really keen to see, as I know my colleagues are, training and development of people and uplift of capability. And if ever we needed that, we need it now. So up to 50% of your investment in your people can be granted by IDA Ireland. And again, very like my two colleagues, 
and I'm, I'm really emphasizing this because it's a brilliant program, is a, the 100% grant aided mentor program. And, and we've joined in with EI to access the capability of mentors there to really support companies. And you know what? What's wrong with saying I don't know something and maybe I can get some capability in to help me? And the mentors are ex-GMs of multinational sites, of large indigenous um, sites who have huge experience. And I think reaching out um, into those programs to get that experience for your own sites phenomenal and then finally my last uh, couple of slides if we move on again just a, a you know the I think you know these very well so I don't need to mention much on them but the, the, these are the government guidelines and the government summary of all the supports that we've been talking about uh, over the last uh, 40 minutes and on the next slide is a link to them all and I would just say you know to to really uh, grab a hold of them and stay connected. Stay connected through Lean Business Ireland, uh, hear what other companies are saying, because I know everybody really enjoys that, but how are we really doing it on the ground? And here's all the links, I hope that the, you reach them on the Lean Business Ireland site, straight into those documents. And um, finally, my last slide, I will just leave you with one thought about your agency that is attracting foreign direct investment. We are telling the world we're open for business. So companies, please um, showcase how great you are and take advantage of what the three of us have been offering in, on behalf of the agencies uh, and take advantage of the grant supports that's there for you. Thanks very much, Darren. Very, very good, Rita. Thank, thank you very much. And again, I suppose just a similar question, uh, if there's any of your potential clients or clients online, or yeah. where, do they, where do they go first, I suppose? What's the first protocol for them? Great question. Same as Rory. You get in contact with your account manager or your IDA account manager if you know them. If you don't know them, you've now got a face here uh, representing IDA, send them behind the scenes there, or just contact the IDA website because there's always someone there checking on new emails coming in and they'd be very pleased to, um, to respond and direct you in the right place. Very good. Okay, thank you, Breda. So just briefly, I'm going to have a quick conversation with Rory just in relation to Lean Business Ireland. So as most of you know at this stage, um, these, these, these events or discussions that we've had over the last number of weeks are, I suppose, hosted or coordinated, for want of a better word, through Lean Business Ireland. Uh, and Rory, you're the, you're the chairperson of Lean Business Ireland, I suppose. Um, quickly, um, what's the plans for the rest of 2020? <laughs> Put you on the spot here now. Uh, what's the plans for Lean Business Ireland for the rest of the year, essentially? Yeah, well, normally we run a large conference in May. Uh, we had it all booked, ready to go, um, but obviously that's not going to happen. Uh, or certainly not in that format, uh, but we are discussing whether we can uh, use an, a different format and whether that would work for us. Um, Lean Business Ireland is obviously about community. It's about uh, us connecting this group and, and a much wider group um, and connecting with people who are interested in Lean. So. Whether we can achieve that in an online format, we, we'll figure out. But, uh, but that's the, the question. Uh, in the meantime, this is working well. And uh, let's keep on with, with what's working well. The real magic in Lean Business Ireland is in the regional networks. And, and the shout out uh, tonight and, and in the last uh, six weeks or so has, is to the regional Lean networks. Uh, the leadership that's been shown there has been amazing. Um, to get this up and running, yeah has been great yeah, yeah. so it's all, it's all well and good having a strategy but i suppose th th this forum and these discussions sort of didn't come from any strategic plan but they were a necessity like like lots of things that happened over the last number of weeks in businesses they sort of almost happened because they needed to happen and you know it's credit to, to the people here from the various different networks who have sort of got their heads together uh, i know there was probably a, a tentative plan to try and do something on a, on a countrywide basis and again that has sort of almost happened accidentally on purpose, <laughs> should I say. But uh, yeah, it's great to see. It's great to see. Not surprising, given no. um, where we as a community come from, mm -hmm. you know, and, and our, our outlook on, mm -hmm. on agility and being able to roll with the punches and find, find the, uh, the best out of it. Yeah. Exactly. And I suppose people say, you know, the, the lean community, it's about sharing, you know, because we learn from each other at the end of the day. It's not like uh, one business suddenly cracks the the, the, the the nut and doesn't tell anybody else how they've done it. You know, so in fairness in Ireland, I think we're very good at, at sharing the successes and the, the struggles and challenges and through the network of you know consultants and through the lean networks and the communication between the various companies and the fact that they're so open and willing to open their doors to each other. I think that's something that, you know, I'm not I don't know if we're unique, but we're certainly we certainly uh, 
certainly uh, are, are well positioned to help each other from that point of view. Yeah. Right. Darren, so may I make a comment course. there on that what you, comment you just said? May I? Of yeah, I'm of in there. Thank you. Um, you know, when we're in front of uh, new new companies in the marketplace and we're saying, you know, come and invest in Ireland, this is the place to do business. The one thing that we always get feedback on is exactly that point. It is amazing uh, the way companies in Ireland open their doors, share how they do business in Ireland. SMEs, indigenous companies, as well as the multinational community and the flexibility and, and what uh, really the the multinational community is 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 always amazed at the flexibility of the irish talent they can get and that's one strong point we have about selling the country so i i think it's and and you're dead right what you say about this community this lean community i mean the way it's just really brought itself together and to support client companies but i can i can tell you certainly from feedback from our clients uh, the multinational community it's it's a great selling point for the country yeah yeah I think you know, Rory. Just in relation to the to the support as well, um, I guess we I've got a lot of questions flicking in here on my communication here from Senan. So I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe open it up for a few general questions. But just one final point that we did want to take an opportunity was maybe for you, Rory, to outline I suppose some of the lean support. And I know they're very well documented on the Lean Business Ireland website with case studies and all sorts of stuff there. But if, uh, is there well, particular lean support? Uh, Senan, if you, you were going to put up the website, if that's possible. Um, so we did some uh, reworking of the website just before the um, the hit, uh, before the sky fell, um, really to simplify it. And, and that's only phase one. I guess in here in particular, I wanted to show the join button top right. Um, in there, there's a sign up to, to newsletters. Um, now, what we haven't done and what we could do is do more in terms of what is joining and membership and so on. But, but that's the start. This is, um, as you say, where we are our case studies, our events, our networks. Um, we need to continuously work on it, continuously improve. Um, yeah, the offers are still very much there. Lean Start plus Transform. Uh, and again, we're, we're looking at how we can lean those uh, because they haven't always been uh, the easiest to navigate either. Yeah, so we've active projects going on on, on on making them better. Very good, very good. Yeah, as I say, it's a fantastic resource, and I suppose you just encourage everybody to, to make use of that resource first and foremost. Go, go there and get your initial information, and then you can make contact with your DAs and the various uh, service providers or whatever. But lots of fantastic information. In the case. So a little bit of time pressure at this stage. We'll just jump into a couple of questions that have been fed here. Um, question in relation to currently all forms are paper-based and it's cumbersome to manage. Is there a plan to digitize and make the forms available online? So I know you mentioned really about claims online. I know some forms are online. I guess there's probably a bit of a mix mixture there. Anybody want to jump in on that one? Certainly for Enterprise Ireland, uh, we are actively looking at like the, the service provider updates forms and application forms are all old-fashioned paper ugly boxes within boxes yeah that's all going yeah good good to hear um and the next one then was quickly are enterprise ireland in a position to share some of the detailed insights into you know the usage of the various funding schemes vouchers loans country-wise industry-wise now i don't expect you to have that information on the tip of your tongue Rory, but is that something that's available publicly or when and how would something like that be available. Yeah, well, we are getting parliamentary questions all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is the Parliament tonight. <laughs> yeah, so certainly the, the data is out there. Um, I, I don't know how much I can pull up uh, quickly. Probably, probably not a whole lot quickly without you all waiting for me to scramble around my computer. Um, but certainly the uh, we haven't, in terms of the, the business continuity, it's a relatively small thing for from Enterprise Ireland's point of view, uh, yes, we've had some hundreds of applications, mm -hmm. but not as many as the Leos. Uh, however, it's it's a starting point, um, and and really, we're looking at the, the bigger offers for the bigger companies. Um, okay, yeah, very good. The next one, next question is just in relation to the business continuity vouchers, and the question is: Is the business continuity voucher available to all types of businesses? And maybe we'll just go to the Leo on that one because I know that's a sweet spot for you guys. So, Jackie, do you want to take that one? Yeah. So is okay. the business continuity all types of businesses um, that are legal. Um, I praise that. Uh, and my Rory know all about this. You know, we, we don't, uh, there's, there's gambling is, is not considered one of those. 
um, or drug development. So anything that's legal under 50 employees. Um, there was also another, just uh, on, on the thread there, there was another question around, you know, Leo's um, identifying mentors out of our own panel, our Enterprise Ireland panel. Where requests have been made to use third party, we are facilitating that. So professionals have had an opportunity to get work out of this. Where we can match and where we see the match and it making sense. If somebody has been working strategically with a company that has been directing them here to four, and they want to continue in order to keep their doors open, we have looked at those requests and satisfied them in many, in many areas. Ultimately, on the third party, we just need to ensure the client is getting the best help they need, regardless of what they might be looking for, and also that we have good spend on behalf of the taxpayer at a time where you know all, all funds are precious at the moment. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that I think on the Enterprise Ireland side, I know they have the specialist service provider, Rory, would that be fair to say that there's potential opportunities to take specialist business advice as well? Yeah, absolutely, yes. Now, our offers are training grants, effectively, so um, it does mean that the, the request to get the carpenter in to do the perspex, um, I'm afraid we're not able to help. No, with. and neither are we. Genuine, you know, it's a genuine cost. Yeah, yeah. However, if you were to get somebody in to help decide where to put the perspex. That's a different, yeah. Now we're into <laughs> advisory services, yeah. <laughs> okay, very, very, very good. Oh. There is, uh, and maybe the question is, is buried in that question, but there is a gap of companies who, who are not getting any of these supports, I suppose. And that is companies above uh, 50 people. Um, we're only able to support those who are in manufacturing or internationally traded services. Uh, so we have an exception for the large retailers or medium to large retailers, um, but we don't have supports for the large hotel um, other than go to fall to Ireland. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are gaps in, in the market that, that we're not able to help with. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I suppose it's not, not your problem, dare I say, Rory, but there probably is a significant, <laughs> some significant issue in, in that particular sector, I suppose, in relation to the types of supports that may be open to them. And that's, I guess, a challenge for the real parliament, not this one here tonight. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's, that, 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 that is a tricky one. Um, another couple of quick questions before we start to wrap up. Uh, can a limited business that is incorporated five months get any grants or vouchers or support? Does anybody want to take that one? Well, again, um, we've, we've had a number of startups look at business continuity and, and really you would have needed to show that you are up and running a viable business in order mm. to get the full value of a continuity voucher. But we have used some of the um, requests, we've aligned mentors with them because some of them are just about, we, we deal with them as if they weren't in a COVID world and we're facing similar challenges to anyone with a startup. So it, it needs to be on a case by case business, case by case uh, basis. On the, tra the trading online voucher, your business needs to be registered six months. So registered six months uh, for the trading online voucher. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. anything from your side, Rory, on that one or Brida? I'm afraid I, I would have to take it offline. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think uh, it'd be it'd be similar even for companies setting up here in Ireland. You know, yeah. we're kind of the time will be a year. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, now, that's... in some cases, uh, we you know we introduce you know need to to show they have a business plan and that they're moving forward to to generate jobs in the country. Yeah. yeah, no, no, absolutely. You know, that's fully understandable. And I guess, you know, there are there are the sort of startup scenarios. I know that's something that the Leo, it's a, it's a real sweet spot in there for Leo yeah. for startup mentoring and, you know, startup programs and stuff like that. So when you're in the five months, uh, while, while your business may be thriving, you know, that you're still considered to be early stage and startup and the funding in that area uh, is, is, is probably, you know, around mentorship with local enterprise. Obviously, if, if you're a bigger startup entity, there's high potential startup funding from Enterprise Ireland at the game, but that's a, a bigger a bigger show um okay one there was one other question just before we finish uh just there um yeah is there is there a training and development fund for small business similar to the ida training and development fund anybody wanna so in terms of enterprise ireland is focused in two areas one is on management development training 
uh, which we organize ourselves, programs, um, excel at, at selling and, and so on. Um, but the other support is really around lean. So we have managed to corner the, the training budget in Enterprise Ireland around the lean program, lean start, plus and transform. So we don't do general training um, as such. Uh, there needs to be a lean element. Sure, we, we take a wide view as to what's involved in a lean transform, but lean, tra lean training is, is it um, in the main free. Um, and we do a broad, a broad spectrum of management capability and capacity building for companies. Everything from digital, we cannot satisfy the appetite for digital training at the moment for people to become more equipped for the new world of digital mm. hosting meetings like this and, each, and indeed marketing. We also do the management development, one of our flagship programs. We've moved all our start your own business programs Good. online um, as well, and indeed seen a surge in the request for start your own business. Um, so we listen to the people on the ground telling us what they want, and then we tailor packages around that. We don't fund companies directly um, for for training themselves, but provide what we're being asked for in the main um, true needs analysis and so forth. And again, we don't preclude based on you know size in the main. You know, if there's if there's a need in your company for training, come and if we've capacity to take you into the program, we will. Okay, okay, very good. Um, there's a query there just in relation to the slides being made available after the after the event. I guess Senan can handle that, but I suspect we should be in a position to share those slides. Jackie, yeah. Rory, yeah. Frida, yes. have nothing there yeah. that can't be shared. Absolutely. So I'm sure Senan, as he always does, will look after the do the needful on that one first. Uh, so good, yeah, slides will be shared. I see him confirming there. Uh, final question, probably, I'm not sure about this myself. Any advice for hospitality sector B and Bs? Guys, anybody, any suggestions as to where to send people looking for support in those sectors or? All to Ireland. Uh, All to Ireland. I'm not sure that they've money, whether it's yeah. just uh, advice, uh, but that's yeah. where they go. Yeah, yeah it's, a real, it's, a real challenge. it's a real challenge, unfortunately. Um, and it's one that we, we're not in a position to support tonight, unfortunately, but mm. that's a challenge for somebody else. Um, so look, folks, I think that more or less brings us to the end of tonight's proceedings. I want to, uh, first of all, just remind people about the, the lean uh, regional lean networks, again, sort of driven through Lean Business Ireland. There's that join button that, that Rory put up there on the top corner. Uh, it doesn't maybe get used as much as we'd like to see it uh, used. So it's an opportunity to click the join button, select your local uh, local regional network, and then sort of get onto the mailing list and get get uh, get in, get involved with. Uh, as I say, when we come back to the to to, to uh, the new normal, well, we would hope we would have opportunities to come in and see some of the some of the businesses in action and see some some lean tools and techniques in action. Uh, it's been very valuable up to now, going in and out of businesses, and hopefully we get to see some of that uh, in the future. In the meantime, you know there'll be lots of digital learning, lots of online resources made available to network members and stuff like that and um, again a special thank you to the to the three panelists we had this this, uh, this evening uh, really appreciate you giving up your time in the evenings to us you, you know you're very busy during the day so thanks for giving us the, the hour of your time Tenon has me on a very tight a very tight rein here on my timekeeping so no more than an hour <laughs> so uh, very good um, <laughs> <to> you, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> we just we just about achieved it. I think we're we've got a minute left. So Senan Senan will be uh, will be happy with me. Um, <laughs> so I think that's it, folks. Unless there's anything else in the, in the chat bar, there's lots of thank yous to our participants. So thanks very much, uh, Senan. I don't know if you have anything just to wrap up, but uh, that's me over and out. And uh, thank you very much, folks. Thanks, Darren. Thank, thank you, all. Darren. Thanks very much, Darren. We no shall be in touch about future upcoming events. So stay tuned to your email or leanbusinessireland.ie. Thank you all. Best of luck and have a great evening. Thank Cheers. You. Good evening, all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone.